In this video, I'm going to do a little bit more with finite difference problems as they apply to conduction of heat transfer. And I'm going to go over some of the problems you've already seen, and I'll elaborate on some of them, and then I will uh, show you some other uh, examples. So this should help you with your printed circuit board project for your lecture, part of the course. And let me start with, <clears throat> with problem and homework seven, problem one. Okay, the initial problem was here where you had 200 degrees C on the top nodes, 300 degrees C on the two side nodes, we had the right side insulated and the bottom nodes all at 20 degrees C. The formulas that you developed for the internal, and here are the formulas, the associated graphics for them. The one that we'll be using later on in this video is this interior, you know, interior corner nodes. Formula basically, all of these formulas are basically averages. You're taking the four nodes that are horizontal and vertical from the node that you're calculating for, and you're adding them up and you're dividing by four. If it's an internal node, like this one, you have four, you have one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the right, one on the left. So you're averaging those four temperatures. With an edge node, like you see here, with the edge node, you're taking half of you're taking half of the node on the bottom and half of the node on the top. So on this on this side one here, it, it's only you're, you're only getting half of that area, so you're only getting half of that temperature. Whereas the left side of that, the left side of that, you get a one. It's it's one times t one. So it's a full temperature. And then you, you basically have T1 plus two halves, which make one. So you got, you got two temperatures, you divide by two, you get the average. Here you have a half a temperature and a half a temperature because you're on a corner node. Um, we don't have any corner nodes that we're calculating on this particular problem, but down below we do. And with a corner node, exterior corner node, you get half of a temperature and half of a temperature and you divide by one. Basically, you're finding the average because you're taking a half of one and a half of the other one. You're finding the average of those two temperatures. So a little trick I wanted to show you for demonstrating the temperatures here and the gradients. If you highlight all those numbers and you go to conditional formatting under color scales and you pick one of these, you can now show your, your colors where the highest temperature, the highest temperature, and by the way, this is 200. The highest temperature is is 300 degrees. That's red, and it goes down into blue being the coldest. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table that's a little bit higher resolution than this table. So instead of four by four, I'm going to I'm going to say it's going to be uh, 16 by 16. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take this cell, which is an interior cell, I'll control C it, copy it, control V and I'll paste it in there. And then you can see it's, it's red right now. We'll worry about the colors in a minute. And then with Excel, you can just grab that lower corner. You can just grab that lower corner and pull it down. And it copies, in each one of these copies, if you look at the formula, it, it uses the same orientation, the one above, the one below, the one to the right, the one to the left, and then adds them up, divides by four. And then what I can do is I can take this whole row, this whole column, and copy it, sorry, this whole column, grab that bottom corner, and copy it across. Now I won't copy it to the last one, because the last one is an exterior node. So I copied all, all this row, this column across to all the columns, and now I've got to worry about this last row. This last row, this last column, let me zoom in a little bit to be able to grab that. Grab that, copy that down through. 
and that should grab all of them. Now I'll take, let me, let me redo this. I'll grab the whole, all of the table and go back to conditional scale and condition all of them. So now, I'm not sure why I didn't grab those two. Let me do it again. Conditional scale. There we go. Okay, good. All right. The other thing I did with this is I took and made a a plot of the small one, and I also made a plot of the larger table. They're handy, and as I'll show you, I'll show you in a minute how to do that. I'll erase that, and I'll grab this table, and I'll go to Insert Other Types of Charts. And what I'm going to put in there is this contour plot. Hit OK. And there's the contour <coughs> showing me the different colors uh, for each of the, and it actually tells you what, what the colors ranges are in terms of temperatures, which is nice. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you there, there, there is a little bit of deception here. In the way the, gra uh, the way the series are done, uh, what I'll do is I'll change this. Let me change that uh, to 500, that 200 to 500 since it's an input. And you can see it changed down here, meaning the upper part is really down below. Now you can change that around if you want. Let me let me first change it back to 200, so you can see it go back. And what you do is you click on the series, right click, go to Format Axis. Under Format Axis, go Series in Reverse Order, right there. Click that, and you're OK. Now, it should correspond to the top and the bottom. I'll put 400 there, and you can see it happened. And that was 400 degrees to the upper, you know, upper left-hand corner, not total left-hand corner, but upper left-hand corner, which is right there. So you can see it happened right there. So it is oriented properly now. Oh. <clears throat> what I did with this graph, with this table, is I did a, I did a surface graph for it. Now, I could change that type to be more of a, you can see more of the colors of it. And you could right click on this and you could rotate it and look at it differently if you want. You can see there's an upheaval right there. I've got, uh, I put 400, 500 degrees here. Let me bring this down to 200 like we had originally, and this is 200. All right, and you can see basically that they're, they're very similar plots. This is just more of a 3D plot. Now, as you can see, if I go and let's say on, <coughs> on number seven there, I go and put a, put a, let's say 700 degrees. You can see it, it you can see the spike where and everything goes down from that. You can see it sort of radiating out from there. Also, with it, just within this blue, blue and the red, you can see it em em emulating out from emanating out from that. I'll put another 700 there, and you can see again you're, you're getting more, more reddish in this area. So the, the heat is bleeding into this, into this area. It doesn't really affect much out in here. So this is just a higher resolution. Of what the smaller 4x4 is, just a higher resolution of it. Problem three from your homework, and this is where you have a couple of heat sources. You've got six watts in this node and 10 watts on that node. And what I did here is I said, okay, the delta, I, I put it in into cells. I put the delta and I put the, the uh, K factor, con the conductivity factor and the wattage for each of the nodes. I also numbered where the node was. This is node one, um, row one, column two. This is row one, column three. So they both have the same uh, conductivity and they both have the same thickness, but they have different wattages. So in here, since this is an edge node, look at the formula. The formula here, this is the formula right here for an edge node, right there, right? It's, it's half of one of them, half of the other one, plus a whole temperature. 
So if you think about that, that that there it takes a it takes the whole temperature coming from the bottom and half from the left and half from the right, and then it divides by two. But since we also have an added heat load to it, right there, what I did is instead of put the number in there, I put the cells locations in there. And notice also that I did, I did the cell locations with absolute. I typically do that as a habit because these are only one locations. And if I did copy and paste this, they would stay in those locations, reference to those locations. In other words, what you can do is you can say, okay, I want something equal. I want it equal to this cell location, let's say, but I want an absolute. What you can do is you can hit the F4 key and it changes it automatically, puts the dollar signs in front of the row and the column and makes it absolute. So that's a neat trick with, so you don't have to go and type in the dollar signs to make it absolute. You make it absolute if you were going to copy and paste it other into other cells and it would still stay in these reference locations because they're not changing. Whereas when you copy and paste things through, the cell locations, if they're not absolute, they're relative, so they're relative to whatever cell. And that helps you a lot when you do copy and paste, as you saw in the above one. I mean, did all these, I didn't have to type them in. Okay. So the formula is here for adding uh, a node, um, adding to a node the heat load. And this happens to be an edge, edge node. These top ones here are edge nodes. This last problem I want to talk about, I added, uh, just to make something a little different, I did add a heat source at this node right here. So it's basically second, second row, second column. I highlighted it in red here, just so you know which one it is. That's, that's the one that's coming in. Um, these are boundary conditions. These, these sides here along here are, are insulated. So not losing, there's no heat gain or loss on those. But you do have uh, a cold side here down at 20. So the heat's gonna propagate down into the 20 degree, towards the 20 degree. But you're also gonna get some heat generated here depending on what your wattage is. Now I, I put in uh, the watts, the 12 initially, the, uh, the thickness is, is uh, 0.001 meters, and the conductivity is 100 watts per meter K. Now, um, the thing that's different here is this, this corner node. That corner node right there is the one that's different. Uh, it's one you haven't done before. I do have the formula for it up here. This is T1 plus T2 plus half of T3 plus half of T4 divided by 3. So you'll see that formula up in here where you're taking this full node here, this, this full node here, but only half of the top one coming into it. So only half of it coming in and half coming from the right. So now you've seen an interior, interior corner. Now, the load I, I put on this cell, or this, this node, which is, um, which is up here, you can see, I, it's an interior node, so you're gonna add all four of the, you're gonna add all four of the temperatures, the top one, the bottom one, the right one, the left one, and then you're gonna add the heat. Now again, I use the formula for the heat. I put it over here, 12, 12, you don't have to do this, uh, whatever, however you want to do it. You can do it in, you can do the numbers in the calculation. For demonstration purposes, it works out nice, as you'll see in a second. So, you see that formula? I also made them absolute. So I take the heat, I divide by the, the thickness, and I divide by the, the temperature, and and then you add all of them up together and you divide by four and it gives you an average. Once you have that average, right, that, that gets thrown into the equations. Now what I did here is I just copied this down here. No big deal. I just so whatever whatever I whatever I put in here, it'll automatically change here. Uh, I just did that so I could show you. I'll grab that. 
and I'll change the color scaling so that you can see the color scaling. I also took these th this table and put it into a put it into a surface so you can ch you can see what's going to happen if I change some of these numbers. Let me change the the wattage in. Let me go from 12 to 120. You can see exactly where that is. You can see exactly where that where that temperature came up. It came up to almost 600 678 degrees. And you can see that in three dimensions. It's a nice nice representation. If I made if I knew more positions and I knew and, and I had a bigger bigger table to work with, I could this could be a lot a lot smoother of uh, these transitions would be a lot smoother and give you a better representation of it. That's not what this problem is, but uh, I could have a problem that had many, you know, 100 by 100. That's it. I will send you this spreadsheet, all right? I will send you the spreadsheet if you want to fool around with it. It's totally, totally up to you. Um, hope this helped. If you have any questions on your project or any other questions on your lab, please, please email me. Hope you liked the video and have a good day.